this is the second video for the first section of chapter four. So again, I've split the first section of chapter four or subsection of chapter four into two parts. Uh, this one deals with the property that a to the k, the subgroup generated by a to the k is equal to the subgroup generated by the greatest common divisor of n and k. So let's take a look at the property. The property says let a be an element of g of order n. So the element is of order n. So that's a is of order n. And let k be some positive integer. Then the order, or sorry, the cyclic subgroup generated by a to the k is equal to the cyclic subgroup generated by the greatest common divisor of n and k. And a to the k, the out number of elements of that group is the same as n divided by gcd of n and k. So for me, when I read something like that, it's really hard to make sense of it. There's just a lot of symbols and a lot of numbers. And so I really have to look at an example for it to make sense to me. So here's an example for those of you who learn like me. So suppose the order of A is 24. So that means N is 24 and K is 10. Well, let's take a look at what we can determine based on this theorem. So the subgroup generated by a to the 10th, which would be a to the 10th, a to the 20th, a to the 30th, but again, um, this has an order of 24, so this would really be a to the 30 minus 24, or a to the 6th, and then a to the 16th, and so on, that this subgroup is exactly the same as the subgroup of a to some number. So let's find out what that number is. Let's find the GCD, greatest common divisor of n, which is 24 and 10. So what is the largest number that goes into both 24 and 10? That value is two, find that any way that you'd like. Uh, I'm not gonna spend time on that. I hope we can all find a greatest common divisor. If not, I do have some video somewhere on my page about finding a GCD. So what this is saying is if I take a squared, I'm going to get the exact same subgroup. Obviously it's gonna be in a different order, but we know that doesn't matter. So we're saying a squared, a to the fourth, a to the sixth, all the way up to a to the 20th, a to the 22nd, a to the 24th would just be a to the zero. That's what the first part of this theorem says, is that those two are the same. So the cyclic subgroup generated by a to the 10th is the same as the cyclic subgroup generated by a squared. Why is that helpful? Because this one's a lot easier to do, a lot less mental math. Just go up by twos until you get back to the identity. The other part says, how many elements are in here? Well, the number of elements in here is n divided by the GCD of n and k. In this case, 24 divided by 2 or 12. So each of those, this would also be true that the number of elements in each of those would be the same. And in this case, that number is 12. So the number of elements or the order of that element is 12. This particular theorem has four corollaries. So we're going to look at two at a time. The first one says that if we have a finite cyclic group, the order of an element divides the order of the group. So remember the order of the element tells us how many times do we have to perform an operation to get back to the identity. The order of the group is how many elements are in the group. So if you'll recall, U14 um, contains the elements 1, 3, 5, 9, 11, 13. Elements that are less than 14 relatively prime to 14. So the order of U14 is the number of elements in the group, which is six. So for each of these, which is saying, if I were to find the subgroup generated by one and three and five and nine and 11 and 13, what would be their orders? How many elements would be in that cyclic subgroup? And so we're going to go back to 
um, what this says is that the order of an element has to divide the order of the group. So what divides six? Just one and two and three and six. And in fact, if you found each of these subgroups, you would find that one has an order of one, which makes perfect sense. Three has an order of six, which means three actually generates the entire group. Five has an order of six, which means five generates the entire group. Nine has an order of three, 11 of three, and 13 of two. So we can see that each of those are one, two, three, or six. The other um, property says let the order of A equal to N, and again that just means A to the N is equal to E, and N is the smallest value which that is true for. Then A to the I, the cyclic subgroup um, generated by A to the I is equal to the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the J, if and only if the GCD of those two for N and I, or N and J, are equal. And then the second part of that is just going back to the fact that the values here, the number of values here are going to be the same. So let's take a look at an example. Let A be an element of a group and let the order of A be 15. So that's N. Compute the orders of A to the 6th, A to the 10th, and A to the 8th. So how am I going to find A to the 6th? Well, if I look at the GCD, I'm not going to use an equal sign there, that's mathematically wrong. A to the 6, we're going to look at the GCD of 15, because that's N, and 6, which is 3. 3 is the largest value that goes into 15 and 6. So the order of A to the 6 is equal to 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So that's how we can use that particular corollary. Again, what's the order of a to the 10th? Well, for a to the 10th, oops, for a to the 10th, the GCD of 15 and 10 is five. So I'm going to take, to find the order of a to the 10th, I'm going to take 15 divided by five, which is three. So the order of a to the 10th is three. And in the same way, if I did this for a to the eighth, I would find the GCD of 15 and 8, which is 1. So the order of A to the 8th is 15 divided by 1, or 15. So essentially, A would generate the entire group because it has an order of 15, just like A. The next two corollaries start um, both have everything to do with generators. So we're looking at what, which are generators of a set. So the first one says, let A be, the order of A be N. So again, A to the N is equal to E. Then the cyclic subgroup generated by A is the same as the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the J, if and only if the GCD of N and J is equal to one, or the two are relatively prime. So again, I couldn't find a great question um, that wasn't too complicated that we could go through together. So I kind of made this one up, but I think it's helpful. Now we've already talked about U14 and we even talked about what the orders were. So you'll probably already know the answer to that question without actually doing the work. But if I'm looking at U14, remember U14 is the set of elements that are less than 14, but relatively prime to 14. So one and three and five and nine and 11 and 13. There are six elements. And if I know that five is a generator and I want to find another generator, I can actually use this theorem. So what I've done is I've written out the cyclic subgroup generated by five. And again, this is five to the first, five squared, because five squared would be 25, but mod 14 is 11, and so on and so forth. So five to the third, five to the fourth, five to the fifth, and then five to the sixth, which brings me back to the identity. So without having to go through and take find the um, subset generated by 11 or 13 or 9 or 3 or 1 without having to do that work, can I find the other element that generates U14? Well, I can using this property. 
we're saying that the two that a uh, the cyclic subgroup generated by five is going to be equal to the cyclic subgroup generated by five to the j if n and j the gcd of n and j is one so again i'm not talking i'm talking about which element corresponds to five to the first five to the second five to the third and so on so what i'm looking for are with n obviously being six because there are six elements the order of five is six so the gcd of six and j has to be equal to one so what are my choices my choices are one well that's not going to work two well that's not going to work three well that's not going to work and again one doesn't work because five to the one is five so obviously i'm not looking for five to the first because five to the first is always going to be equal to five to the first five to the fourth well those aren't relatively prime because two goes into both four and six five to the fifth however does make sense the gcd of six and five is in fact one so what does that tell me that tells me that the element that is five to the fifth or three is the other element that will generate the entire set and i'll leave that to you to go ahead and generate the entire set using three but it's pretty straightforward just modular um, multiplication the last corollary an integer k in z to the n so this is specific to z sub n which remember is just the integers mod n under um, mod n under modular addition and that says an integer k in zn is a generator of zn if and only if the gcd of n okay in this case that's the gcd of 25 for our example and k is equal to one so essentially what values are relatively prime to 25 well one is going to work right so that one works two yep that works and in fact the only thing that's not going to work is factors of 25 so what are factors of 25 just five so i could make a list and say okay well yep that's going to generate the entire set yep this is going to generate the entire set but really the only value that's not going to generate the entire set is five so if i found the cyclic subgroup generated by one under addition if you'll recall or two under addition or three under addition everything except for five so we'll skip five go to six go to seven all the way up to n minus one which is 24. in our next video we will take a look at the classification of subgroups of cyclic groups